Hello everyone! Gmail has an incredible potential for building automations with external tools such as NA10. And today we are about to build some really cool workflows with new NA10 AI nodes. For example, we will use OpenAI assistants to create drafts of emails for our incoming, for example, inquiries from customers and so on. So let's get started. Let's start with the first example, which is auto-labeling of new incoming emails. I've prepared three labels and I want to automatically add the specific label for the message that comes into my inbox. So let's go to the workflow. And as you can see, I have already added my credentials for Gmail here. I will leave you a link in the description for official documentation in NA10 on how to set up your credentials. In this example, I will use Gmail trigger, which will check for new messages every minute. And when I test execution, this note, you can see that I received a message and this is my inquiry that I received from my potential customer. As I have the ID of this message, I can download the full content of this email and forward it to further steps of this workflow. So when I execute this note, you can see that in table view, I have not only the basic information such as thread ID or message ID, but I also have the content of this message in HTML or plain text. And here comes the crucial part, which is the AI chain. Here as a user prompt, I want to pass the plain text message from the previous note. And as a system prompt, I want to add instructions about labels available in my Gmail account. In this example, I've got three labels available. The first one is partnership, the second one inquiry, and the third one is notification. I also added the instruction that one email message can have more than one label. In settings of OpenAI node, I choose model GPT-4 Turbo Preview and as a response mode, I choose JSON. I also limited the temperature to 0.0. .0. In output parser, I defined my JSON schema because I wanted the chain to return the array of labels that should fit the content of my incoming emails. Let's right now make a test execution of this chain for the data that I already have in my workflow, which is the inquiry about smartphones. As you can see in the output of this chain, I have correctly received the label of this message, which is inquiry. In the next step, I simply set this array once again to easier manipulate this workflow and make some future changes a bit less complicated. Right now, the workflow has two paths. The first one is responsible for getting all labels for the specific Gmail account. So when I execute this node, I should receive all labels that I can add to my emails. Within those labels, we can see the free ones that we added to our Gmail account. And those labels have also specific IDs. The second branch is responsible for splitting out the array of labels that were generated by the AI chain. Next, we want to merge the outputs of those two paths together. And as a key, we use here the name of the label. Eventually, we should receive the IDs of the labels that have been generated by the AI chain. In this example, message has only one label, which is inquiry. Finally, we can create an array of labels for this email message. And for this purpose, we use aggregate node where we want to specify the IDs of those labels. And in the next step, which is the final step, we select the ID of the message in our inbox and in the label names field, we simply add the array of the labels for this message. So after we test execute this node, we should receive in our email account the correctly added label for this message. Since the workflow is ready, we can test it in action. So what I'm going to do right now is I'm going back to NA10 and I will activate the workflow. Now every message that comes into my inbox will be checked whether the labels available for this Gmail account can be added to this specific email. So I received a message about shipment that is available. And when I refreshed my inbox, you can see that the workflow added properly the label notification. In the second example, we will build a workflow for creating auto drafts of replies that are based on our company data. So for this purpose, we will use OpenAI Assistant and I've also prepared an example database of products. Each position includes the name of the product, description, price, or even stock number and photos of those items. 
Now we need to add this file to our assistant. I've already created the OpenAI assistant, so I go to tab assistants, and here you can see the name of my assistant, instructions that I've pasted, and the model that I use. I used, of course, GPT-4 Turbo Preview, and I've also added the retrieval mode because I want to use our products database as a file. So I can test my assistant and I will ask the question, what laptops are available in your offer? So when I run this assistant, I should receive a response that is based on the database of products that I've uploaded. And I will receive, of course, the correct response. Now let's get to our Gmail account and let's create a new label. I will create this label because I want the workflow to recognize which emails should be processed by the OpenAI assistant. So I've created the label AI and I will add it to one of the messages. In this workflow, I will use the schedule trigger to run the workflow every minute. And in the next step, I want to get all messages that have specific labels. In this example, I want to get all inquiries that have label AI. Once again, I will need the full content of the message, which is the plain text. And this is the parameter that I will pass to the second node, which is the OpenAI Assistant node. Since I've already created my assistant using OpenAI dashboard, I don't need to create the second one using an A10 node. So I simply choose my assistant from the list and I can test run this node. In the output, I receive a response from the assistant, which is correct, and this one is formatted in Markdown. So we need to a bit format it to actually create a draft of this response. But first, I need to set some parameters. For example, I need to set thread ID, email address of the recipient, the subject of the message, and message ID. With this done, I can move to the next step, which is converting the markdown to HTML. For this purpose, I use the specific node in NA10. And as a markdown, I of course point to the input, that is response from OpenAI Assistant, and as a destination key, I use response as well, because I simply want to replace the markdown input with the HTML output. Next, we need to format our message with the RFC standard. So I create a set node with the property row and I need to point the recipient of the message, the subject of the message, and as a content type, I need to paste HTML because we will use HTML as the basic format of our message. In order to make this email draft acceptable by the Gmail API, we need to convert it to base64. So for this purpose, I use the simple code snippet and the code node in NA10. So after executing this node, I should receive the base64 encoded string that I can use in my API call. Finally comes the crucial part, which is inserting the draft to our Gmail account. And for this purpose, I use the endpoint drafts for Gmail API. And of course, I make a post request with the HTTP request node. I want to also use the predefined credential, which I've prepared before. Finally, I need to add the body of this request. So I simply paste the JSON with property message. And under this property, I need to specify the raw message, which is the encoded message from OpenAI assistants and the thread ID that is the destination of my email draft. So after I click test note, I should see in my Gmail inbox that the draft for this specific message has been added. And when I scroll down, I can see that this one is the proper answer for the question that I received in the incoming email. Still, however, I need to delete this AI label from this message because otherwise workflow will keep generating drafts for this message over and over again. So in the last step of this workflow, I use Gmail node once again, and I point to the message ID that has the label AI, and I simply want to delete it. After I refresh my inbox, you can see that this AI label is gone. But what if you want to trigger one or multiple automations for the specific email message manually? So for this purpose, I've created the dedicated Gmail add-on. With this plugin, you can trigger your automations for messages instantly. For example, right now I want to add the label using AI for this specific message. And when I refresh my inbox, I can see that here is the added label for this email, which is the notification label. In the second message, I want not only to add the AI label, but also to create AI generated draft of the response. So after I trigger the second automation, after a few seconds, I receive the very 
customized response that I can edit and send to my customer. This draft has been made using OpenAI Assistant and the file that I uploaded to it. Since I've triggered both automations, you can see that the inquiry label is also added to this thread. After the plugin is installed and configured, adding of the webhooks is actually very easy. In this example, I don't have any webhooks in my library, so I need to add one. For this purpose, I go to my NA10 instance and here in the webhook node, I need to copy the address of my webhook. What is very important, I need to set my HTTP method to post. I'm going to copy the test URL and I'm going back to my plugin dashboard. Here I will paste the URL and add the label of this webhook. In this case, I want to add the AI label by triggering this webhook, so I simply added such a label. Then I need to refresh my add-on. Let's see right now what kind of data is passed together with the webhook. So I'm going to run the webhook node in NA10 and I'm going to trigger the webhook from my Gmail add-on. After I have the confirmation that webhook has been triggered, I can go back to NA10 dashboard. As you can see in the output, we have all necessary data that we can use to create automations using NA10 or any other automation software. The data such as thread ID, subject, or the body of the message are there, so we can use it in the further steps of the workflow. I'm going to activate this automation and I need to make a small adjustment because the URL of the webhook has changed. So I need to delete the test suffix from this URL and refresh the add-on once again. When I trigger my newly added webhook, you can see that automation works properly because when I refresh my inbox, you can see that the label notification has been added to the message that I wanted to trigger. Let's see right now how we can do instant replies using this Gmail add-on. So I need to add the new webhook. And here I have the other workflow that is responsible for creating the drafts of responses with OpenAI assistants. Once again, I'm going to use post as HTTP method, but I want to respond with the respond to webhook node. Now I'm going to copy the test URL of the webhook, paste it in my Gmail add-on and add the label, which in this case is response AI draft. Next, after I click add webhook and refresh the plugin, I can see how it performs. So I will go back to NA10, click listen for test even for the webhook and trigger the webhook in the Gmail plugin. After I receive the confirmation that webhook has been triggered, I can go back to NA10 and see what data has been passed to the NA10. Once again, we received all information necessary for the creating AI drafts with OpenAI assistance. In the next step of this workflow, which is Ask OpenAI Assistant, I simply create the draft of the response to my customer. So after I execute this step, I receive in the output just as before markdown version of the response from OpenAI Assistant. Next, I need to convert this response to HTML. So I use for this purpose node convert to HTML from NA10 library. And finally, I need to use respond to webhook node. In response body field, I need to enter the expression to pass the HTML version of the draft. And in respond with field, I need to select text. Eventually, I can activate this automation and go back to my Gmail plugin to modify the URL of the webhook once again. So for the webhook response AI draft, I need to click edit and delete the suffix test. So I click edit webhook once again and refresh the plugin. Now, as my automation is fully operational, I can click trigger for this specific webhook. And after a few seconds, I should receive the AI response from OpenAI assistants and can edit, for example, this message and send to the customer. All webhooks in this plugin are stored within the memory of your Gmail account. But if you want to create a backup file of your webhooks, you can simply export them to the external JSON file and then import them. This is the root directory of my Google Drive account connected with my Gmail account. And now as I click export webhooks, I should get the file with the webhooks library exported from the plugin. I can save this file as a backup or for example, share it with coworkers that also want to use the same automations and the same webhook endpoints. Importing of webhooks is also very easy. 
I'm going to delete all webhooks from my library. And as you remember, the backup file is in my root directory of Google Drive account. So I will click import and just with this one click, I restore all webhooks. You can use this add-on also on mobile. So in this example, I will trigger the automation from my iPhone. So here I have the automation response AI draft. And after I trigger it, I receive the draft from my automation from NA10. Let's say right now you want to create a draft of the message, but now not using the open AI assistants, but using AI agents. This one gives you the ability to also add the memory to your email conversations. I moved the product database to Superbase and I'm going to add AI label to one of the inquiry messages. The concept is very similar to the one that we used with OpenAI assistants. So first I need to get the full content of the message. So I use the same Gmail node. The message is now passed not to OpenAI Assistant, but to AI Agent. And the agent has the specific ability to retrieve the information using the tools. I'm using the OpenAI Functions Agent and as a text, I simply paste the content of my message. As subnotes, I added, of course, the OpenAI Chat Model and also Window Buffer Memory. So as a session ID, I will use the thread ID retrieved from the Gmail. As a tool, I've created the very custom one. It has a name products tool and as a description, I've added information that it's responsible for retrieving the data from database. My workflow tool is on the same canvas, so I simply added the expression that points to the workflow ID. Every time this tool is triggered, it will pass the query from the user to the second workflow. So to keep this workflow clean, I've created the separate set node where I added the query parameter. This workflow tool also includes AI agent, but this time it's SQL agent. So this node is responsible for retrieving the data from the database and providing information based on this data. Since I use Superbase as a data source, I selected Postgres and I also added my Postgres credentials. In the last node of this workflow tool, I've created the set node with response parameter because I want to pass back to this mine agent the output from the SQL agent. Let me right now test execute this agent node and in the output, we receive the response that is fully based on the data from our Postgres database. The other parts of this workflow are almost the same as in case of OpenAI functions workflow. So first we need to map the parameters and then we will convert the output from the agent to HTML. Next, we need to convert this message to RSC format. So for this purpose, we use once again set node. Finally, we need to encode this message. So once again, we use the code node with the snippet that we used before. Eventually, we need to make an HTTP request to Gmail API. So we added a draft to our Gmail thread and we also need to remove the AI label from this message. The only difference is the last node, which is chat memory manager. So we can see the chat history of the thread in our Gmail account. So when I click it and select the option to get many messages and execute this node, you can see the human message, which is the input message from our Gmail account and AI response, which is the output generated by the AI agent. When we go back to the Gmail inbox and refresh it, we can see that AI label is gone for this message and the draft has been added. Just as before, we can click and edit this draft before we send it to the customer. Let's run a test execution of this automation for the one last time. So I will go back to NA10 and activate this workflow. Currently, I have two inquiries in my inbox. The first one is about smartphones that are available from stock. And the second one is about the price of iPhone X. For both of those messages, I will add the label AI. So the automation knows that those messages should be processed. Since the automation runs in one minute interval, after a moment, I can refresh the inbox and I can see that for both of those inquiries, the draft of message has been added and the AI label is gone. With those automation workflows and Gmail plugin, you can really speed up your everyday work with responding email messages. And that's all for today. Thank you very much for watching. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up, subscribe to my channel and to my newsletter. Link like always is in the description. And of course, see you in the next video. Bye.